Hello students, so today uh, we have a lecture, a new lecture in poetry and we are going to study another poem by Wilfred Owen after we have already analyzed and uh, read and analyzed uh, Futility by Wilfred Owen uh, we are going to see another example of his poetry which is considered to be a very good representative of war poetry and if you remember we have already uh, mentioned the features of this kind of poetry war poetry which was mainly written by uh, poets who were soldiers some of them were actually not uh, poets uh, indeed they were soldiers and they have gone through the experience of war and after uh, surviving they have written poems uh, speaking about the atrocities the horrors of war of course we said also that we have another type of poets war poets who glorify wars and uh, think that wars are important for the glory of nations uh, Wilfred Owen falls in the first kind of poets because he was a soldier in the first place he wasn't a poet in the beginning he was a soldier and then after having his experience in war he wrote about it and it's one of the uh, let's say uh, the most uh, honest depictions of war because he was fighting in the front lines and he saw all the uh, atrocities all kinds of uh, violence and killings that happen in front lines so what, what do we need to know about this poem and if you notice actually the title of the poem is written in latin dulce et decorum est uh, this is a latin expression and we're going to see where does it come from so what do we need to know about the poem dulce et decorum est is a poem wilfred owen wrote following his experience fighting in the trenches in northern france during world war the first so this is a depiction of a real life experience in uh, in the front lines so dulce et decorum est pro patria mori actually it's a much longer expression uh, and it is in latin it is a line taken from latin odes of the roman poet horace okay so if you uh, if you are familiar with this name horace horace is one of the roman poets whose influence uh, extended to let's say uh, i think e even to the 18th century uh, one of his poems in one of his poems actually he mentions this expression and what does it mean it is it means it is sweet and proper to die for one's country here this is what it means in english it is a sweet and proper to die for one's country wilfred owen takes the opposite stance actually he's given this expression as a title and he mentions it in the poem but we will understand through reading that he's not uh, let's say he, he doesn't support this idea he doesn't support this concept that one should die for their country and it is something good or it is a glory for this person on the contrary you will see he is the, he has the opposite uh, attitude towards that so the poem begins like this bent double like old beggars under sacks knock kneed coughing like hags we cursed through sludge these two lines in the beginning describe the situation of the soldiers now he's he's taking us directly directly to the battlefield in, in this place they were bent double like old beggars under sacks actually they were carrying packs on their on their backs so <clears throat> Because they are heavy somehow very heavy uh, and you know soldiers uh, when they are moving around and they are fighting and when they are even running away from certain attacks or uh, they are all the time very exhausted and very tired so imagine as they are very tired and, and they are having these sacks on their backs they looked like beggars you see and knock need and if you look at their legs they are bent I mean they, they are not stable they are not walking in a st steady way uh, their their knees are very weak they cannot lean on them as they are moving coughing like hags even their health their health is not good they are coughing just like old people 
even though most of them, of course, we, we all know that soldiers, uh, people who are taking to the war uh, are young people. The soldiers are all uh, maybe in their 20s. But unfortunately, because of the conditions of war, they are so uh, unhealthy. They, they're, they're in condition that they look like old people. We curse through sludge. Okay, and uh, actually this is, uh, these two lines, although they are very short and very brief, they precisely describe the, the difficulty, the, the harsh experience of being in a battlefield. Okay, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs. Uh, you see some, in, 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 um, if you have ever seen any documentaries or if you have read about war, especially the First World War, you know that the Germans usually they, they throw kind of uh, flares, uh, let's say bombs, and, and these bombs produce a kind of light, flares, so that they know the position of the soldiers, the British soldiers, so they can uh, target them. Okay, the, these flares clear the place and make, the, make it possible for the Germans to attack the soldiers precisely, to know each one where is he standing, for example? So one of these uh, flares w w was dropped and they turned their backs because they were trying to protect themselves so that they are not discovered. Okay? And towards our distant rest began to trudge. Okay, so now th they want to run away. They want to run away because they know that there's a an attack coming towards them. Men marched asleep. If you look at the men, the soldiers, as they are moving, you think that you are looking at people who are walking in their sleep. They are marching, they are uh, trying to run away, but their movement is like the movement of someone who's walking in sleep because, you know, they are tired, exhausted, so they cannot move uh, quickly or easily. Many had lost their boots. Their condition is very, very miserable some of them they don't have their boots on their feet so they can't run quickly they can not move easily on on the ground but limped on bloodshot some of them even they have uh, injuries uh, there is blood coming out of them all went lame all blind so the, the situation is very difficult for them they cannot walk easily because of the, their condition their, their general condition their health the injuries they are suffering from they cannot see clearly drunk with fatigue actually when you look at them this is another comparison as if you are looking at drunk people walking because they are under the influence of heavy drinking wine okay deaf even to the hoots of tired outstripped five nines that dropped behind i mean can you imagine being so tired to the point that this person can't pay attention to all the things around them they are not totally aware to the extent that when the five nines when, what are the five nines actually they are kind of uh, gas shells uh, when they are dropped they, they produce this poisonous gas and when it is uh, of course when it is inhaled it kills instantly so when these uh, gas shells were dropped behind them they were not able even to notice that uh, these were dropped I mean uh, can you imagine how uh, the situation is horrible so the soldiers were in a very miserable situation walking like they are asleep because of being so tired they lost their equipment some of them are injured they couldn't feel the gas shells dropping behind them this is a disaster okay because you know uh, soldiers must be prepared for all kind of attacks gas gas quick boys an ecstasy of fumbling fitting the clumsy helmets just in time so suddenly actually someone notices the gas shells uh, fortunately one, some of the soldier one of the soldiers uh, noticed and he tried to warn the others he said gas gas he's shouting telling them uh, now we are attacked by gas so what, what do they need to do they ha they have to put the helmets the, the masks which protect them from inhaling this gas quick boys an ecstasy of fumbling fitting the clumsy helmets 
just in time just in time so actually they were able to put the helmets just in the right time before the gas is spread all around them and they have to inhale it without being aware so uh, they put the they put on their helmet just in time before they get poisoned but someone still was yelling out and stumbling unfortunately one of the soldiers couldn't make it in time couldn't wear the, the masks in time and floundering like a man in fire or lime one of them was still yelling shouting he, he couldn't get his helmet so uh, sorry he looked like someone struggling in a fire uh, when they were looking at him and you know the gas when it is spread around it's not easy to move because you can't see okay so the man looked like he's struggling as if he's in fire or m maybe he's drowning somewhere dim through the misty panes misty panes and thick green light so the, the others were looking at him why why they couldn't help him because uh, the sight around them was very dim because of the gas they couldn't see clearly or they cannot move towards him in order to save him as under a green sea I saw him drowning so the speaker here is telling us that uh, the what happened around is that the green the green uh, the green light and also the gas around them it made it very difficult for them to look and when they were noticing this man yelling and shouting as if they are looking at someone who's drowning in a green sea okay th this is a kind of uh, comparison here the speaker was looking through his mask to the spreading of the gas all around while the man unable to wear his mask was like someone drowning in the sea unfortunately this man uh, couldn't be saved Notice here in, in the poem, as you are reading, we'll see that at this point, there is this space and we have these two lines, which are separated from the beginning of the poem. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. So why, they are, why these lines, uh, two lines are separated? Because you see, uh, as if the, the speaker was remembering here in the first stanza, he was remembering the experience he was remembering this incident and suddenly he comes out of this uh, memory to the present okay so these these two lines uh, the speaker is talking now in the present he, he, he was remembering something from the war experience and after finishing the memory now he's coming back to to, to the present moment these two lines indicate that the speaker is remembering a moment from his past experience and more. The sight of the dying soldier keeps visiting him in dreams. So actually this is not easy, living these experiences. Uh, most of the soldiers, um, after coming back, those who survived, after coming, coming back, uh, they were seeing these different scenes they have experienced in, in their own dreams. Some of them even actually got uh, serious uh, psychological uh, disturbances uh, it's, it's not easy actually to live the experience in, in of war and come out uh, of that without being deeply influenced by that so the the <coughs> the speaker here after coming back from war after surviving he keeps seeing different scenes like this one that, that like the scene of this uh, unfortunate uh, soldier who was killed by gas so even surviving war offers ceaseless future torment even surviving does not mean that you have uh, you are fortunate because you are you're going to experience all kinds of memories or uh, bad or uh, <coughs> let's say horrible dreams and memories of the past if in some smothering dreams you too could pace notice now the shift he's talking to us you see you the readers the listeners the audience whoever you are whoever you are reading or listening to this poem I want to tell you something what is this thing 
if in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in so of course after they have after the uh, site now is clear they they want to transfer this young man this dead soldier somewhere to bury him so they took him and they put him in the uh, sorry in the wagon okay they put him in a wagon and watch the white eyes writhing in his face his hanging face like a devil's sick of sin so actually it's not a pleasant scene this is a very um, uh, very atrocious actually uh, the man was placed on a wagon and you know because he has inhaled the, the poisonous gas his eyes are twisting in his face his, his face is looking uh, very horrible it's hanging uh, it has this expression uh, like a devil look, look at this simile here like a devil's sick of sin it's, it's not something pleasant to look at if you could hear at every jolt you see as they are moving the wagon it sometimes they are stumbling over uh, rocks or something so uh, each time they are stumbling the body is moving also in the wagon and there is this sound which is coming out of the lungs the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs so after inhaling what happened to the soldier poor soldier his lungs are corrupted ruined and they are uh, uh, they, they are producing blood and this blood is coming out of his mouth you see the, what kind of poison this gas has and uh, so imagine they were driving this wagon the soldier was in this wagon and they are looking at him the way he died the the, the heinous way he, he he died obscene as cancer bitter as the cut of vile incurable sores on innocent tongues so uh, it, it is just just like cancer which is taking the life of an innocent pe uh, person the same is uh, what happened for for this soldier so if you have if you have ever experienced such a thing this is what he's trying to say here if you have ever experienced such a thing my friend you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory the old lie don't say it's decorum est pro patria mori so this is the uh, this is the expression uh, which means it is sweet and proper to die for one's country uh, for for someone like wilfred owen who has experienced such things in, in, in the front lines this is a lie you see the old lie because you know this is taken from the roman uh, poets we are talking before uh, for uh, before many centuries ago actually so this is an this is a lie because why would someone innocent like this soldier die in such a horrible way for what for what reason what is this glory that takes uh, the life of someone who is young and innocent like this man and deprive him of living and, and why should someone die in such a horrible way why they should suffer inhaling poisonous gas in such a horrible way and they die each uh, each moment because you know uh, killings different kinds of killings the, the person when he's killed for example by a fire shot it is not like when he's killed by a poisonous poisonous gas it's not the same the, there are certain ways of killing that makes this person die immediately but other ways that makes them suffer before dying so uh, why is it worth it i mean to, to to be killed like this what is it glory of, of your nation for what okay and he's saying that unfortunately this is something taught to children they, they, they believe that this is something that they can uh, uh, they can achieve when they, are, they get older and maybe uh, these soldiers were trained like this when they were young uh, 
children see so the speaker uh, now the speaker addressing the audience okay readers or listeners saying that if they were to have the same experience that he and the other soldiers had when they place the dead soldier in the wagon with his eyes twisted and hearing the sound of his coughing blood from his ruined lungs which is similar to the cancer that takes away the innocence you would not eagerly speak to children hungry for a sense of pride and heroism that it is sweet and fitting to die for one's country okay so having a real experience is not like talking about abstract things or talking about things uh, from far away distance maybe you are sitting at home and writing poems about poetry uh, sorry about war but uh, it isn't like going yourself to war and experiencing what happens there so mainly this poem uh, if we speak about the main themes in its first three stanzas don't say a decorum est presents a vision of war and world war the first in particular that is entirely brutal bitter and pessimistic the fourth and final stanza marks a shift okay so in the beginning actually we were introduced into the scene from the war and then we see there is a shift in the other stanzas while the first stanza focused on the we of the regiment the second focused on the he of the dying soldier and the third on the I of the traumatized speaker so he's giving us different visions uh, this is really interesting um, th there are the people who suffered the, the soldiers they, they speak about their experience from their own perspective we they speak about themselves and then talking about this dead soldier how he suffered Okay, you are talking about him, he, and then he speaks about his own feelings, how this thing affected him when he uh, starts with I. And more interesting for, for the fourth stanza is that he focuses on you. What about you? How do you think about this experience? How you view such experiences when, when you are told about them? Very interesting how this view shifts from the beginning to to the end of the poem so in this stanza the speaker directly addresses the reader trying to make them understand the brutal reality of war okay so it's very important for someone like Wilfred Owen to tell people about the truth of war this is why he's writing poetry after all that's all his purpose he has many times declared that what he was interested in not poetry itself but the pity of war and he thought that through poetry he was able to to make people really understand what is it like so although the dying soldier in Dulce et Decorum Est is an individual character within the narrative he also stands in for a generation of young men exposed to the brutality of the first world war so it is not just this soldier who's uh, was the, the concern of the poem what the uh, poet is trying to do what uh, Wilfred Owen is trying to do is to show us that this soldier or any soldier that he mentions in his poems stands for all the suffering soldiers in wars okay this is kind of a universal symbol for uh, symbol for uh, the innocent people who are forced to fight in wars and who are having this uh, tragic uh, sorry this is tragic uh, destiny so i hope this was a good explanation a helpful one and i hope to see you in other explanations soon